What's going on, movie lovers? Welcome to our Spectre spoiler review for ApocaflixMovies.com. I'm your host, Jacob Bartley, and I'm here again with my regulars, Jake Berlin and Gio Ramos. How you doing, Jake? Good. Glad to be here talking to Spectre. Oh, yeah. How you doing, Gio? Good, good. Glad to be here, guys. So we're putting this review a little later than the movie came out. Of Just finally got some time to come do the review. We saw the movie... When was it last week? Thursday night. Oh, the night it came out, yeah. Thursday night. Um, so yeah, we're gonna run it like our normal reviews. We're gonna talk about, give our overall thoughts, talk about our positives, our negatives, and then give it a score out of 10. And this is gonna be a spoilers heavy review. We're gonna get into depth about the characters, the story, the plot, thing, action sequences that happen in the movie, everything. So if you haven't seen the film and you're sensitive to spoilers, you don't wanna know anything, don't watch this review right now. Go watch the film and then come back and watch this review. We'd appreciate it. But um, if you're fine with spoilers, then go ahead and keep listening. It's all good. Um, so Spectre is getting mediocre reviews around the web right now. It's getting it's mixed reviews. I mean, I checked last time I checked Rotten Tomatoes, it was on a 63. Yeah, I think it dropped down to a 62, but yeah, it's I mean, still fresh. That's better than I thought it would be yeah. because – Lately, I haven't been checking Rotten Tomato scores before I go into a movie. So, and then after hearing all the negative backlash and watching the film, I was expecting it to have like a 40% or something. But, so, apparently the critics don't think it's horrible, but, and it's not horrible, but it's definitely not living up to Skyfall's expectations, according to, you know, the general web consensus. But, we're not here to talk about that, we're here to talk about our thoughts on the movie, so... Uh, I'm going to start with you, Gio. So you actually ha were all caught up. You reviewed all three Bond films with Daniel Craig before, prior to seeing this film. So you're you're all caught up. Yes, so sir. with all that in mind, what is your general thoughts on Spectre? Okay. So as a Daniel Craig Bond film, I feel like it's kind of a disappointment. The last three Bond films... Um, what I'll say is that it, it it stayed true to how Daniel Craig uh, introduced uh, a new, an entirely new James Bond to us. He was a gritty, very human character. You know, he had real emotions. He had real flaws uh, to him. And in this movie, um, he is basically not not the same guy we we've all uh, especially for me like that i've seen in the past three films so it's it's a little bit of a disappointment for me as a daniel craig james bond film but as a film an action film i'd say it's it's decent to good um, that's the best i can say about it okay yeah i mean i i pretty much agree i'll go ahead and give my general thoughts on the film um it's not a bad movie. I wouldn't say it's a bad movie, I but it bad. coming off of Skyfall, uh, knowing how good these Daniel Craig Bond movies can be with Casino Royale and Skyfall with Quantum of the Solace being the weakest, um, I was expecting something amazing, especially the director, Sam Mendes, returning Mendes. Sam Mendes mm -hmm. from Spectre, or from Skyfall, I mean, mm -hmm. and so how can you not, you know, be expecting something great? Oh, yeah. and. I think that's why this movie fell flat is because our expectations were high. I mean, at least for me, my expectations were really high. So as I was watching the film, I, I was like, is this it? I think everyone's expectations were pretty high. So just generally, I, I like you said, Gio, as a, as a Daniel Craig Bond film, it's a disappointment. But just setting everything aside and just at looking at it as a standalone movie, it's, it's okay. So those are my general thoughts. Jake, what did you think about the film overall? Well, like you guys said, I think it, its biggest issue is that it's coming off of Skyfall. Exactly. The Skyfall is a 96% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's pretty hard to beat mm -hmm. or, you know, even come a match to. So, yeah. um, and if you look at it standing on the movie, yeah, it's fun. Um, it's a James Bond movie. I mean, everybody's excited for a James Bond movie. Uh, you know, I it it's hard because... With the Daniel Craig movies, they've become so gritty and uh, grounded and Somewhat almost, dark. yeah, there's a little bit of darkness to them. And uh, it's something, I mean, it had its moments, but it felt like almost a popcorn grab. 
Um, it had those kind of elements towards it, but I mean, overall, I it was it was a good movie. It was fun. It's it's definitely worth checking out. Um, you know, but like you guys said, it as a Daniel Craig movie. Yeah, sure, it is a disappointment, but it's still something worth seeing. So oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'll say it's if you want to go to the theaters to have a good time and watch a fun action film, it's definitely worth it. I would say. Yeah. Um, the only problem for me again is that I don't I, as much as I don't want this film to be as fun as it was. Like honestly, because save that for later. Okay, dude. Okay. Yeah, 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 save that for later. Okay, yeah. okay. So we gave our general <laughs> thoughts. Um, now let's cool. get uh, gonna get into a little depth here. So we're gonna get, talk about the things we liked about the film, and there's there's plenty to like about this movie, um, even though overall a disappointment. So Jake, I want to start with you. What about Spectre? Do you, did you like, and would you tell people to go see it for? Uh, the biggest thing for me was Leah Sadu. Yeah, I thought she absolutely killed it. Um, you know, a lot of I've heard a lot of people say, "Oh, the the Daniel Craig Bond movies, the Bond girls haven't been great." You know, Ava Green started off the franchise pretty strong. Yeah, and it was hard to come back from that. But I think Leah Sadu filled those shoes completely fine. I thought she was, did a really good job. She uh, she was a great counterpart to Bond. Um, held him in check really too when she came into the film, um, and you know. It's it's still a James Bond movie. There's some very cool stuff going on, you know. Uh, I like that James Bond, uh, the, the Craig version, has kind of become this rogue agent most of the time where he's not taking orders, he's going on his own orders. That's always exciting to see because you don't know what's going to happen. You just don't know. Like, he's always working on his own, and then the team comes in later on to help him out. Um, you know, I thought the story was very cool. Spoiler... Uh, I mean, the fact that he ended up being his brother, which I kind of called. Like, I yeah. knew that Christoph was going to happen. Christoph character. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not his, not his blood brother, but someone he grew up with. Yeah, because um, Dan, he's an orphan. Yes. Bond is an orphan. Yeah. And we never so, knew where he came from. Exactly. And, him. you know, that's that's to my next point. I mean, I like that these stories have become much more personal. Um, yeah, definitely. But that does kind of also lead into a negative for me. I'll talk about that later. Um, but Christoph Waltz, I think a great cast as a villain. Uh, didn't get as much screen time as I was hoping um, but you know, the fact that he ended up being his brother and Blowfield, like we all thought he would be, um, ended up getting the scar at the end of the movie, which is pretty cool. Um, I thought Ralph Fiennes as M was very good taking over from, uh, I forget her name. Yeah. I mean, I, but the, the M from the yeah, last like exactly. six movies or so, seven <laughs> movies. Um, I thought that was very cool. Um, but you know, it's, it's a great, I think it's not a great, it's a good step uh, after Skyfall, there's a lot of good positives at it. And so, however you look at it, the action was fun. There's some very cool fight scenes between Daniel Craig and Dave Bautista, especially that train sequence where they're just chucking each other through walls and stuff. Yeah, that was awesome. This is very cool. Um, and I think the the car the car scene too. That that Aston Martin man is sweet. Mm -hmm. Like that car is so awesome. Um, and I, I kind of wish the climax was a little bit better, but I mean, I'll get into that a little bit later. So. Yeah, um, so I'll go ahead and give my positives. I, I got to start. Um, so those scenes that Christoph Waltz was in, minus the little torture scene or whatever was going on, I thought that, I'll get into that later, but them talking was, I was so engaged in those conversations. And just Chris, his voice is so amazing. Like he, he demands your attention when he's on screen. So I liked that. They cast the perfect guy to play a Bond villain, and it's his acting. He, he is the ultimate Bond villain, like the way he acts. Yeah, def I mean, he definitely is. How excited were we all when we heard he was cast? Yeah, like, perfect, spot on casting. Um, and so those scenes when when he's talking to Bond, I loved all of those scenes. I was totally locked in. I do like you, Jake. I thought Leia Sadu did a pretty good job. Um, I just recently rewatched Casino Royale, and not just because I really liked her a lot, but Ava Green, that character was a great character. Like, they, you get into a lot of depth with her. So, like you said, it's hard to, to come after her. There wasn't really a prominent Bond girl in Skyfall. I mean, there was the girl that gets shot in the head, like, halfway. And then through, Naomi Harris. And then Naomi Harris, but there wasn't, like, 
a girl that he's straight up in love with, yeah. you know? And we got that in Sky or in Casino Royale. Gio, was he in love with somebody in so- Quantum of Solace? Like a new person? No. He had flings. Well, no. he was he was looking for revenge for the death of But he had Ava flings. Green, right? He all he bangs a chick in every movie. There's no getting around that. If I'm not mistaken, he had a fling with uh, Olga Kirilenko, right? Um, they never slept together. So but they had a thing. It, but he's always it was, flirting. It was like a flirt, flirtation. Okay. Yeah. So, but he had, he definitely had a thing with uh, Gemma Archison, the redhead, right? Uh, yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure anyway. No, they they, they slept together, but it wasn't anything past that. Yeah, you know? yeah it was the classic James Bond. Yeah. So James yeah. Bond gets laid in every movie. We know that. But um, <laughs> so it's safe to say that Leia Sadu is probably the second best Bond girl in this franchise, in my opinion, because she wasn't in the movie enough for me to compare her and Ava Green, because Ava Green was such a huge part of that film. So, But the screen time she did get, she was great. I love that scene when, even though it could seem cheesy on paper, the scene when they were like, after they killed Batista. Oh, they go after each other. What do we do next? They They look at each other, (laughs) boom, straight in the bedroom. That's the type of things I love about Bond. Like They can make it funny. Oh, that's one of my positive. Actually, was the humor in this movie? I thought it was. I liked it a lot. And there were good moments. There were good the moments. Theater was cracking up the whole time, so I enjoyed the humor in this film. Unlike, like Casino Royale didn't really have humor. I don't think so. Spectre, not as much humor as this one. I don't think. You mean Skyfall? I mean Skyfall. Skyfall was dark. Yeah. Skyfall was dark. Mm-hmm. I feel like. Spectre had more humor than any of the yes, previous three films. Yes. It was a very Pierce Brosnan style. Yeah, and I, yeah. I enjoyed that. I really did enjoy that. Um, yeah, and Ralph Fiennes was a, a formidable replacement to play M. I mean, wasn't he in the previous films? But yeah, he was, he was set up. He yeah. wasn't M yet. Mm-hmm. But um, he was good. Uh, I love seeing all that cast back. I think uh, Ben Wishaw, who played Q, is awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was awesome. I think he's great. In the, I, I, in Naomi Skyfall. Harris, I think she's fantastic. I just wish she was used more as Money Penny because the character is yeah. great. Mm-hmm. But, so, yeah, all those little comedic moments were a huge positive for me because it reminded me of, like, like I loved, I loved uh, Kingsman and Man From U.N.C.L.E. Like, I like when these spy movies, you know, they, they have humor in them. So it was it was a great. So yeah, those are all my main positives. Um, I'm sure there's other few small things that I enjoyed, but um, Gio, let's go to you, man. What did you like about Spectre? Well, the first thing I'll say is the uh, characters. I felt it, all but one character, um, they got right. Um, it was the right selections. Um, what they were trying to do in the movie for all the characters, whether it's uh, Christoph Waltz, Leia Sadu, Dave Bautista, I felt like everybody was like a natural fit for their roles. Um, all, all except one person, which I'll get into all my negatives. Um, I have to mention the cinematography, the opening uh, scene of the Day of the Dead in Mexico, the festival. Uh, just seeing so many, you know, extras. I don't, I don't know how many extras they got, honestly. I want to find out, but like... Uh, looking back on it, like the the wider shot, it, it just looked amazing. Um, if I'm not mistaken, did they film last year the actual Day of the Dead festival? Yes, okay. I believe they did. I okay. remember hearing about that. That's okay. I just wanted that to make sure. Sense. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah, love it. Um, some of the camera work was nice too. Um, I mentioned in my review, there was a one shot at the Day of the Dead festival where it doesn't take the camera off Bond. As it, it was Birdman like. Yeah, yeah. That's what it reminded me of. Mm-hmm. Like, it, I was like, man, there's something wow, about. I didn't notice that. Yeah, there's something that's about crazy. this this scene that that's just like, I'm like, what is it? And I was like, wait, that's it. You're gonna start seeing that a lot more. Yeah, a yeah. lot more. Yeah. Um. What else? The the end. I'll say what what they were trying to go for with Bond going into the old MI6 building that was destroyed in Skyfall, and. On, on his journey to on his way to finding Blowfield, there was like he was kind of like revisiting his past with the uh, whether it was the villains or it was uh, pictures Vesper. on the pictures on the wall. Yeah, pictures green on the space wall. was on there too. Yeah, and where the pictures were, you know, like where where you know you know the, the shooting range and all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. I like what they were going for with that. Um, I like how they closed the film with Bond uh, in his um, Austin Martin uh, D. DB5, I think that's the model. Uh, him riding off to the sunset. I'll mention the uh, fight between Dave Batista and Daniel Craig. It looks, it, it was simple, you know, it wasn't flashy. 
it was it was realistic yeah then very realistic throwing i was like this, haymakers. this is the bond i want <laughs> straight haymakers <laughs> right yeah just killing each other um and then lastly the scene where uh, christoph waltz gets introduced as well not really introduced but when they're in the meeting the organization meeting comes in the shadows just the lighting and like you know there's so much uh, suspense and mystery in there you know you don't see christoph waltz's character but you know he's there and just how he's talking, I thought that was great. Great scene. So uh, that's really some of my negative, uh, positives. Right? <laughs> um, I really yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> you reminded me of a few things that I really enjoyed. The the physicality of Dave Bautista and his scenes, the action scenes with him were awesome. And it was, I can't really recall right now, but it gave Bond a, a physical opponent that could actually go toe-to-toe with him. Like, when a lot of the people he fights, he takes out easily, you know? Like, if, if it was one-on-one fight... Like, he takes them out easily. Like, even all the villains from from Casino Royale, he just, all he has to do is, like, get a gun, boom, they're dead. That's like, a, This Casino Royale is a very mental game for him, not yeah, physical it game. Yeah, there was not one character in there that could yeah. have physically taken him. Yeah. Now, Dave Bautista's character was one, and they established that right away when they yeah. showed Dave Bautista's character, so that was a positive. <laughs> but, yeah, I want to get into negatives now. So, um, obviously, no film is perfect, and... You heard our, we weren't completely satisfied with this film, so obviously we have negatives. Um, I'll go ahead and start. I just, and I'm sure Gio's gonna talk about this more, but they they kind of, Daniel Craig just didn't seem like he was all in. Like his, I don't, I don't wanna use this phrase, but I'll just use it for lack of a better phrase, but he kind of mailed it in to me. Like, and we heard his comments, we talked about him a few weeks ago, He. You know, he'd rather slit his wrist than play James Bond, even though he's using hyperbole. Like, obviously that goes to say he's, he's like tired of James Bond right now. So I could, I could see it in his acting. For example, going back to Casino Royale, you could see his, he's 100%, his heart is in that film. He's given it his all, even in the performance. And also the movie didn't, the way they wrote James Bond Inspector, it didn't call for him to have those moments where he, you know, where he goes off and talks about himself and you get to look inside of his character like a, a lot more depth. He didn't really he didn't really get to talk a lot in this movie about himself, just like stuff that has to do with the mission. So one thing they've gotten right up until this movie was showing the depth of James Bond himself and that was very much lacking in this film. It was more of a, you know, an action film and figuring out what was happening with his, you know, his foster brother and foster parent and stuff. So that's definitely a negative. Um, underutilizing pretty much all of your side characters too, as well. Even though the moments like Dave Bautista's character, great when he was when he was in the movie. Christoph Waltz, great when he was in the movie. Mm-hmm. Leia Sadu, great when she was in the movie. Naima Harris, great when she was in the movie. But all these characters, they were barely in it. Like, how much screen time did Bautista have? How much screen time did Naomi Harris have? Less than two minutes of screen time, I would say, if you combined all her shots together. So they built up this whole like team dynamic where he has all these relationships with all these different characters, and we didn't get to see him further any of those relationships in this movie. And I, I'm not saying I want to see him in what's her name, uh, Money Dollar. What is her name? Money Penny. <laughs> yeah, Money Penny. Penny. <laughs> like Money. Penny. I don't. I didn't necessarily want to see them like take their romantic relationship to another level. I just, I wanted to see more with their friendship, if anything. So, he didn't get to interact with you know those three or four characters who we've seen him interact a lot with in the previous films. Um, and and the major disappointment was not getting a lot from Christoph Waltz. I was expecting him to be to top Javier Bardem as a Bond villain and. I feel like he could have if he was written better and was given more screen time, but as of now, Javier Bardem's the best Bond villain in these Daniel Craig movies for me. So that was definitely a negative. Uh, I'm gonna go to you, Gio. What, I know you have a, probably quite a few negatives, especially after watching all the other films. Um, so what are your negatives? Oh, okay, let's, uh, <laughs> okay, oh uh, boy. Let's start off with the, uh, how different this Bond film is to the, previous Daniel Craig Bond films, it wanted to be more funnier, uh, more lighter, I felt like. And 
you we really got that sign. I mean, the very first uh, action scene where Bond is running away from a collapsing building, he falls and then he lands on the couch, and it's like, for me, I'm like, okay, that's funny, but a little bit out of nowhere. Okay, let's let's fast forward. Bond, Bond and Q, you know, uh, when they first meet, that entire scene, like every other line of dialogue, there's like something funny, a funny line, whether it's Bond destroying the uh, Austin Martin, whether it's uh, Bond having to be under the surveillance of uh, M, whether it's uh, Bond asking uh, Q to make him you know, disappear. It felt like humor, humor, humor. And I'm like, okay, all right. It tries to be a little more funny, okay. And then as the film goes on, it just it continues and it continues, and I'm like, okay, this is not the same Bond that we've gotten in Casino Royale, in Skyfall, and to an extent even in Quantum of Solace. You know, the the gritty, you know, tough uh, James Bond is gone, um, and for me that was a negative because it's like, you know, especially if this is the last film for James Bond, it just further proves that he's kind of phoning it in a little bit. It could also be the writing. I don't know, but uh, that was a, definitely a negative for me. Um, the love story. This love story between uh, Leia Sadu and James Bond. When Leia Sadu, spoiler, tells James Bond uh, that she loves him. Yeah, I, where did that come from? I felt from? like that was... Out of nowhere. I they, felt like, that was the first time he met her in this movie, right? Yes. Yeah. I felt like that, that was a bit forced. Um as much as we wanted to buy into it because we love the character of Leia Sadu and she kind of works well with Bond, it wasn't earned. It wasn't believable. Like, they love each other already, you know? Right. Sure, they're interested in each other, but they love each other now. Mm -hmm. they want but that them. doesn't, not to mean to cut you off, no. but doesn't that go with Ava Green in Casino Royale? I, they took a lot more time to develop that relationship. But they kind of went through really the same did. thing, didn't they? They, I, oh, I will admit, oh, oh, they, I... they did rush it a little bit, but compared to the Leia Sadu character, it was developed a lot okay. more. Yeah, no, I'm because just remember, they had asking. to pretend to be husband and wife yeah, I'm just for asking. a while. Yeah. But for me, I felt like they developed him and, mm -hmm. what's her name? Vesper. Vesper Lynn. Vesper Lynn, yeah. Yeah, they developed that relationship a lot more. I believed it. When they're, when they're on the beach together and he's telling her, like, whatever I have left, it's, it's all for you, I believed it. And well, I did not believe the love in this movie. Well, let's examine that for a little bit uh, since we're talking about it. Um, Vesper, first of all, uh, you watched it recently. That that train scene where they're sitting in the train, uh, Vesper. Oh, when and, she first meets and him, Bond, and they're just back and forth, back and forth, forth just tell, telling each other. And Bond, for the first time, is like, okay, like this woman is. I've met my match. She, she like mentally, my, she, she admires match. my charm, mm -hmm. but she can also read me just as I, much as I can read her. Exactly. Yeah. And then it just grew from there. With uh, with Spectre, she meets him, and she's just a total bitch to Bond. Like like in the beginning, in the snow after Bond saved them. Yeah. Using nothing but an airplane. Their know? initial meet wasn't. Wasn't like they didn't feel like they had chemistry. Yeah. So it, okay, and then from there it just. Um, it goes from there to the to the train where they're having dinner and you can kind of see a chemistry going between them you know sort of like Vesper and Bond and then next and thing you know shows up. next thing you know <laughs> she says I love him and I'm like okay and you said Jake something you said this was kind of familiar to uh, uh, Casino Royale with Ava Green it's very much familiar and I wrote it in my review <laughs> So, <laughs> so, uh, Leia Sadu and Bond are having dinner in train, a conversation, just like Casino Royale. Leia Sadu helps Bond kill someone. Well, not kill, but like, well, essentially, I mean, we're going to assume. Well, they didn't mean to kill him, but. Dead. Like, yeah. yeah. She helped him take him down. Yeah. yeah. Just like Casino Royale with Vesper helping uh, Bond and the staircase kill those two guys. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. And then that, and then like, so I'm just proving a point that it's more similar. And that's something that I noticed, you know, it's so like, as far as rushing them, quote unquote, being in love, you thought it was rushed in Casino Royale as well? No, I'm saying, oh, you didn't? I'm saying that Spectre, oh, just, Spectre, Spectre, oh, the way okay. it went down. Yeah. 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 I it, see what you're the saying. The way it went down was almost similar. Like 
she sees him kill somebody and she falls in love with him. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying. You see? Words, so did you have any? Words, did you have any more negatives? Yeah, I have a lot more negatives. Uh, <laughs> I felt like there were a little bit too many callbacks to the previous films. The story relied on it too much. Um, I mean, how many times does Vesper Lynn get mentioned in this movie? Only the, twice. The right? videotape. Uh, when uh, Christoph is talking to Mr. White in um, uh, the scene, uh, there's a oh, mention yeah. there. Um, and then you see her again at the end. I I, on, I actually thought that was I was okay with that because it had to do with this movie because again, Christoph Waltz's character was the mastermind behind all of James Bond's pain. He was behind Casino Royale, so they have to call back if. If that's what they're going for, for this story, that all these movies, Christoph Waltz was behind the scenes, you know, puppeteering everything. I feel like they had to mention all the other movies. Well, yeah, but I mean, it shouldn't be that big of a deal for Bond anymore because of what he's overcome uh, in Skyfall and in Quantum of Solace, too. Um, Damn it, he loved Vesper, man. Yeah, Just, but at the uh, end, <laughs> at the very end of Quantum of Solace, he finally got his closure and redemption for Vesper. Um, yeah. So there's that. Um, you mentioned the villain, right? Being too underused. Christoph Waltz? Yeah, Christoph Waltz. I thought he was great in his scenes, but he wasn't in the movie enough. Exactly. And that I completely agree with that. I'm not going to reinstate a lot of what you said. I'll just say, uh, you, you know, he was too underused. Not enough of him. I don't know how you get a two-time Academy Award winning actor. And he gets as much screen time as M. Or less. I think uh, just as much. Pretty much equal, but still. Um, and lastly, I'll say the whole side plot of MI6 being shut down, uh, <laughs> being turned. No, that was one of my negatives. That guy, that character, C. Andrew Scott. Andrew Scott. He no. plays Moriarty on the uh, Sherlock show. Or did, anyway. Really? Yeah, he's pretty good. Oh, but. In that show, anyway. <laughs> Not good in this movie, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, that character. I was not that happy character, with that character. It was just annoying. I didn't buy. Yeah. I didn't buy that MI6 was being shut down. They tried to pull a Captain America Winter Soldier thing, where like surveillance and everything. And well, I don't think it was MI6. Right, it was just a double O program, right? I think it was MI. Well, no, no, MI6 and MI. You're right. MI6 and MI5 combined. Um, it was just a double O program was being shut down. Yeah, yeah. Was was being extinct. Like really. After like one incident, I mean, I'm pretty sure nobody died. And di I mean, besides the people who were in the helicopter, but that entire like side plot, it just kept interrupting the story. And then it just, it, it, as far as pacing goes, it completely yeah, like you didn't really care me. about it with everything else going on. Right. Yeah. It's just like, why is it there? And um, let's see. I think that's about it. I mean, if I have anything else, I'll. Yeah, I'm sure some other stuff will come up. So, Jake, you heard us ramble on about our negatives. So, what about Spectre were you disappointed in? Why did it fall flat for you? Uh, I'll go off of Geo and say that the comedy, I thought the comedy was too much for me as well. Wow. Um, I liked, because if you go back, you know, it's hard to go back to it just because it's, it's in my top 10 movies of all time. And, but Casino Royale, there wasn't a ton of comedy in that movie. Not really at and, all. And when there was, it was very subtle. Yeah, like it just subtle. kind of flowed. Yes. Like remember um, when he, sorry, when he gets in the car and then he, he's acting like he's gonna drive, but he just goes in a circle and then pulls right back. Yeah, the hotel. Yeah, 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 yeah. That see that That's, was subtle. Yes. Like yes. they they just barely laughed. Like so it's like in like you said like the stuff with the couch and uh, all that stuff. I mean it did kind of take me out of the movie because I mean when I think of comedy I think of, or uh, spy comedy I think of Pierce Brosnan and James Bond. Yeah. And I wasn't a fan of Pierce Brosnan and James Bond. So I was very much looking forward to the dark and gritty side, like what Skyfall and Casino Royale did, because I liked where it was going. Um, so that kind of took me out of the movie a little bit. Um, it wasn't terrible, but um, it was just a little disappointing for me. Um, I'll also say what you guys are saying about the sporty characters, that there were a few of them that were uh, under, or underutilized pretty well. Uh, obviously, Christoph Waltz as uh, Blofeld. Um, Although he wasn't, you know, involved in the action like Harvey Bardem's character, um, I wish they would have used him a little bit more uh, just as far as, you know, being somewhere, like doing something instead of just standing there talking. 
um, walking up in the shadows or something like that, or seeing the back of his head, turn his head and then walk away or something yeah. like that. Yes. Yeah. Um, it it kind of just seemed like all he needed to do was stand there uh, and, and act instead of just doing something like he normally does. Um, but my biggest disappointment as far as character goes is Naomi Harris. I was really looking forward to her in this movie because when we first saw her in Skyfall, she was Bond's second mate. Like she was backing her up yeah. in the opening scene of Skyfall. She's the one who shot him accidentally. Oh, yeah, yeah. True. But she was involved in the action, and now the, all of a sudden she's a secretary. Mm-hmm. It's like she was barely in this movie. Yeah, so at I, all. I was like, it's. I was looking forward to her kind of being a side agent with him, you know, helping him out. Uh, you know, not where they're partner, partner, uh, buddy cop doing their thing on, on a mission or whatever, but seeing her do something is, is what I wanted to see. Um, it sucks that it didn't happen, but. Um, I still like the character. I wish she was used more. I hope she's used more if there is another one. Um, I'll say also uh, another negative for me is that car chase. Uh, I think a lot of people may have loved the car chase between Dave Bautista and Dana Craig, but I thought it almost felt like they were playing tag. Oh, yeah, a little bit. Like it, it was like they were kind of just driving around, like chasing each other, and it didn't seem like anything really was going on. Like it, yeah. it kind of got boring after a while. It's like, like they, they were, were racing, kind of. Yeah, and it was like, okay, I'm going to get close to you. Now I'm going to drive away. Oh, now we're on separate streets. Now we're going to go this way. <laughs> it's like, okay, it, I was hoping more for that because that, that part of the, the movie was featured heavily in trailers. True, Like, yeah. I thought it was going to be a big part of the movie. Um, and then, uh, just to continue what you're saying, they tried to make it funny, too, with Bond's uh, Aston Martin not being able to do a damn thing. It, he yeah. He fire, this and that, that press yeah. buttons, yeah. and it's like, all right, you're trying to make it funny because you want to hide that it's, ugh, you know? Yeah, and, I mean, I think another negative for me is also the, the side plot with, uh, with the uh, surveillance stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, the okay, bonds, yeah. The 007 yes. stuff yeah. getting shut down, or 00 program, per se. Yeah, I didn't even care about that stuff at yeah, all. I, mean, I just kinda, let it I mean, it wrapped up in the end and whatnot and all that kind of stuff, but throughout the movie, it kind of was like, why are we going back to this? Like, I want to see James Bond do his stuff. Um, and then the reveal. Oh, I'm Spectre. Really? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, that I mean, that, that's not a huge negative for me, but it makes sense that Spectre wraps everything together from the from the franchise of the Dan and Craig movies. Um, it just wasn't executed great, I think, because... No, that's what I was going to say when you were done. Um, that the idea... Of it's this great. Movie. It's great. Looking at like imagine when they created the outline, like and like look at it on paper, like oh we got something awesome here, but it's all in the execution was done wrong. Yeah, I mean there's a, I mean there's there's gonna be things I think about as I think about this movie throughout the week and you know next few weeks or whatever, but those are the things that stand out to me the most. Um, Car Chase, Naomi Harris, Christoph Waltz, and the the comedy. I think the comedy was the one that stuck out to me the most, just because when I think of James Bond, I don't think of the Man from Uncle, like no, that kind right. of movie. You're right. Like especially with the Dana Craig movies, gritty, hard nosed, down to work. Like let's get after it. Oh, oh, that, that brings me to another point. I want to see James Bond use more gadgets. Like true. It's always he's always known for getting his stuff from Q or from MI6 or whatever. He doesn't really have any more gadgets anymore. Like, I want to see him use more gadgets. That's and, always been something with James also, Bond. Like even in the video games, you all have all these gadgets. Yeah. You know. And if, and if, you know, say this is Dana Craig's last movie is Bond, which the ending is a perfect ending for that. Yeah. I, I would was, love to I, see him come back because I think he's the best Bond ever. Oh, but, yeah. Hands down. But if they were to move on to a different Bond, I don't want to see a personal story. I don't want his background. I want him to go on solo missions again where Just each like, movie is one single movie. Like? Like spread it like, yeah, I mean, I don't think, I don't need four movies to wrap it all together. Like? All those movies, Spectre made it seem like there's a... It's one giant franchise. Yeah, I mean, they kind of have to... It's the same character with the same story. Well, they... I mean, it could be like that, but not to a point where it tracks back to where he's from. Yeah, no. Like, one guy's involved with this and this and this. Like, I want to see personal... Not personal stories, but um, single stories spread out over three, four, five movies. Just because I think that's when it's best. Like, let the character do what he does like, best. Wrap, whatever story's in the first one, wrap it up at the end of that movie. Yes, yes. And then in the second one, Go into something bring different. up a new story exactly. and yes. end that story in that movie. Yeah. But the same character's still there. And it's know? nothing against these movies. I think they're awesome. But that's what I want to see because now I have four movies under my belt. 
Yeah. They're awesome. It ra- it's really cool how they set everything up. But get back to the original single stories within one movie. That's yeah. my personal thought on it. And we could always talk about they should have done this, they should have done that, but we got what we got, so we, you know, we have to. And it's not a like we said, it's not a bad it's film. It's not at a all. bad. I wouldn't call it's it a bad. It's worth movie. seeing. Yeah, it, it definitely is, especially if you're a fan of Daniel Craig and Bond. Like his, I think I told you guys this before. While maybe he wasn't giving it his all acting wise, and he wasn't written his best uh, compared to the other movies, his physicality still there. Like he still looks like a beast like you don't want to mess with james bond you know so and i think like pierce brosnan doesn't scare me like like just if i saw that guy i wouldn't be scared to fight him you know well i don't think any of the previous bonds scared me exactly but james bond's or if, daniel craig's if the daniel one. craig was coming after me i would be scared for scared for my and life. that's another thing they need to make james bond a, uh the best spy in the world yeah. It seems like throughout these movies, it almost feels like he's not the best spy. There's someone out there. Well, who, he's. You know what he is? He's very sloppy. Sloppy. Sloppy is a heavy word, though. I, sloppy I, is a heavy word. I won't say sloppy. I'll say he's very uh, not, unorganized, not careful. Like because, especially in uh, Casino Royale. Well, I'm not saying he's sloppy with his strategy and like, you know, and stuff like that. Just like he's. Breaking all these things and killing. The you know what I noticed image. watching all these movies? I honestly think, like, just from analyzing this character, like, he enjoys killing people. Because he just, like, even in... But that plays into the whole license to kill thing. Exactly. He has to be. But, and that's where I was going to go with this. He has to be. That's where I was going to go with this. I brought this up to you guys when we walked out of the theater. There was... So this Skyfall, or Spectre as a whole, was a disappointing movie. But there was some good stuff in there. Like, on paper, it looked great because... I told you guys they, when Ralph Fiennes was talking to C, right? Yeah. Yes. So when M was talking to C, they're talking about Bond, talking about how he's a killer. You know, he's a he's a cold killer. It's all he is. And and then they said, what does Ralph Fiennes says? He said, sometimes having the license to kill is also having the license not to kill. That's probably and, the best line in the movie. And yeah, and so I was watching Casino Royale. He could. He could ju- all he could like knock these guys out and not kill them, but he purposely kills them. Like he wants to kill them, is what I'm saying. Like he in in Casino Royale, like he's like sneaking, following Ava Green, and there's this guy with a gun. He could have just like grabbed him, like put him in the sleeper, and put him, knocked him out cold. He just shoots him. Like he's just killing people left and right. And well, he has the license to kill. Like I don't understand why, like. It's almost like he's a serial killer. Like he wants to kill. Well, but there are moments like if you watch all four in a row, there are moments where it progresses to where he doesn't kill. Okay. Well, yeah. And it, I, like well, I think that's what they were going for too. Yeah, is like he's Solace and Quantum of Solace and in Skyfall. He, okay. He kind of backs off. From that. Well, because so he struggles with that this whole time. Well, I've I've heard I've yeah. heard many people like a lot of fans have been saying like especially the older fans who were able to watch Sean Connery, Roger Moore, like those guys. Yeah. They're saying that. Uh, a lot of people were frustrated when Dan and Craig got casted because he didn't fit the role. And then when Ca- Casino Royale came out, it was an amazing film. Yeah. But that's, that's not the James Bond that everybody knew. But as these movies have progressed, he's been slowly progressing into the James Bond that everybody knows. Well, the four movies have been turning him into the Sean Connery, Roger Moore, like those type of characters. And then you got the Pierce Brosnan in this one. Well, <laughs> it's apparently so. We This is the first time we've seen him become who he really is i guess like it's almost an origin story you can say we didn't see him begin well but we saw him become very like like rugged and like yeah like we see him become the james bond we've always known so i don't know if people maybe people, maybe people may like it and that has to do with the license to kill because the james bond we know like the pierce brought he, he doesn't always kill yeah so this this is a very different bond from what we've known and they establish him in the other movie like especially in casino royale as like a killer which and is what I freaking love about That was like, <laughs> so that has been like the overlying theme in all of these movies. And I, I feel like they wrapped, if this is the last one, I think they left it open to where he can easily come back. He can easily come back. They can make a sequel back. because yes. Christoph Waltz, spoiler, is still alive. And, and I, they, they, gave him the, the, they gave him the scar at the end. They it's did like, that on come purpose. on. Come and on. you see the look, like when he's looking at Bond when he walks away, like the look he was giving him, he's like, this is not over. Like I'm coming for you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill that girl too. I'm gonna like that's the look he was giving him, and I just while the movie was disappointing overall, the way it wrapped up, 
as that film and the franchise as a whole, if this is the end, I really enjoyed because like I said, it gave us that defining moment. He's face to face with this one man who has brought him all of this trouble through these wow, this past decade. You know, he's killed he was killed his father figure, killed his love the love of his life. Yeah. And he just, killed M. Exactly. Every everyone that he was close to he killed like he was responsible for their deaths their deaths ultimately and he was face to face with him holding a gun to him he could have killed him no problem and that was the big character defining moment when he doesn't kill him and I thought that was handled great so I did why okay so <laughs> I mean not not all that you said but when you guys were saying this is the guy responsible for doing this, this, and this, I feel like it takes away from the other characters. Because then, now, now you're saying that, oh, it was me who did it. It was me. It yeah, was, no, I agree with that. It wasn't, that's all I'm saying. Like, oh, it, okay. It wasn't, it wasn't Mad, Mad Mickelson or Javier Bardem, you know, it was just saying it was me. And I'm like, no, it wasn't you. Because before this movie, out of the three Bond films, we had two really good villains, and you're trying to take away from them as characters, which is furthermore taking away from the film. That's kind of what I didn't like yeah. about it, yeah. But so. did you did you like how James Bond had to make that decision, whether to kill him or not, and yes. then he ultimately didn't do yes. it? I like that whole setup where at one side he has M, and the other side he has uh See, that's awesome, Swan. and like, he, I was like his decision, you know, do I keep up with this life or do I finally find happiness? Which in Casino Royale, you get that 30 minutes where him and Ava Green are just lovey-dovey. They're happy together. And, and then all shit breaks loose. Exactly. So, oh, who's and to say all shit will break loose? If you're respect. like, if, if you like this character, then you're, you're like, finally he gets to be happy. If this is, if that's, this is the end and you just... You look at it as an open ending and you just assume that him and that Leia Sadu went off to live happily ever after, then, you know, you got to feel happy for the guy, you know? So, I don't know. I was satisfied in that aspect of the film. Does anyone else find it weird that Daniel Craig or James Bond is walking away with a girl whose father was partially responsible for killing Vesper Lane? <laughs> yeah, that's very ironic. Because she's um, Mr. White's uh, daughter. But going back to that, I wanted to uh, ask, you <laughs> said, Jake, you said that you thought the Vesper relationship was rushed as well. But if you think about it, well, James Bond just is like, he falls easily for girls. Uh, Daddy issues. But if you think about it, so <laughs> Leia Sadu's character, <laughs> she's known him for like two days. I love you. She loves him. But Dude, Vesper, girls would be girls. But Vesper was playing him the whole time. Even though she, yeah. she did eventually have feelings for him. But so you could say that those her romantic feelings towards him were rushed, but half of the time that she was with him, she didn't really like him. It was all she was all she was playing him the whole time. So it wasn't real feelings at first. So it wasn't really rushed because it wasn't real feelings. So then what is was it ever real? Yes. I think no, I think she fell in love with him eventually like after spending a lot of time with him but when you first see that because if you love someone you don't you don't betray them like she did well, well she was she already, betrayed hard well, she was already in it before she met him like she yeah was, she didn't have a choice at that point um so she betrayed him but then she saved him because if you remember while well, that oh yeah yeah that torture she, scene in mm -hmm. casino royale she told she'd give him the money it's mr white who let him live yeah and then she kind of Sacrifices herself. Yeah, I want to ask you. I know we're not reviewing Casino Royale. No, yeah. we're thinking we're talking the whole Jane, the Daniel Craig yeah, the because this is probably anymore. the final time we'll talk and, about Daniel Craig and, and James Bond. All, like we said, this movie like relies heavily on the first three that have to do with it. So I was watching Casino Royale last night, and I'm trying to pay attention to everything because in these Bond movies, there's a lot going on. Like, yes, there's so much. You know, everyone betraying each other and stuff. So <laughs> why why did she have to die? Why did she? Lock herself in the cage. She's like, all right, I know, I know. She she had her boyfriend that was. Is he dead at this point? No. Her her actual boyfriend like, that she was in love with. Dead inspector or? No 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 dead. in, in Casino Royale. Yeah. Uh, you know, but we never meet her boyfriend. Yes we do. We do. Yeah. Who was he? Uh, at the end of Quantum of Solace. Oh okay. See, I haven't seen Solace in forever. Yeah, neither have I. I don't remember that. Okay, yeah. so I for, I tried to forget about so that. So here's the thing. Like, <laughs> 
is she just feel guilty? Like, why does she lock her? She, he he could have saved her. But she locks herself in the cage and says, I'm sorry, James. Yes. So I don't understand why she had to die. Okay, so uh, part of it was guilt, um, you know, betraying the man, you know, she loved. Another part of it was if you notice after afterwards, who's watching from a distance? White. Exactly. Because if had Vesper had lived, White and... They would have kept coming after Quantum her. as a whole, because uh, it was revealed that he works for Quantum, would have went after them both. And they would have never been able to live happily ever after. So why would Bond want to live? Bond, at that point, Bond is like, no. Like, he's making a choice by saving her that I forgive you. Mm-hmm. I don't want to live with you. I don't want to be an MI6 agent anymore. Vesper's like, no. No, you can't. But since you won't listen to me anymore... I have to sacrifice myself because for the sake of us both, you know, because she'll never be safe anymore, especially after kind of betraying. So she didn't want to have to like live the rest of her life. Like, looking behind her back. Okay. Quantum and at James Bond too. I just, I understand that. And you know, that would suck to have to live that way, but why not at least try? Like there's a possible way to like, survive like get away and hide and you know yeah but was she was her ultimate plan to go back to her boyfriend though because m uh, at the end of casino royale m says she had you know a french boyfriend they were extremely in love but in quantum of solace uh which picks up right after casino royale see that's why i'm going back to you because it's, it's, i haven't seen solace or skyfall it's in a while. it's revealed that her boyfriend was really playing her really he was a part of he was a part of so ultimately they were using her to use bond yes yeah and okay and bond finds this out in casino but that doesn't change that doesn't change that she really thought that that was that she loved that guy and that that was a real relationship oh yeah and that's what bond is pissed off about in quantum of solace is that he he, he's no longer mad at vesper as much he's more angry that they used vesper yeah and he like me and my brother were like laughing we were like this dude's in love like he's head over heels for vesper on those beach scenes would you not be over head over heels for vesper looking of course i would be but it's so that's why i love casino royale so much because there's so much depth to him like that scene when he says and he's so into it he's like whatever's left of me whatever there is left like, I hope it's good enough for like you. Like the or something? You can, you can have it. Like, yeah. whatever part of my soul is left, you can have it. And I just love those moments. Bruh, I mean, I, man. Spectre now, Spectre. We have to yeah. talk about Spectre now. I know. I, that's <laughs> why I said I don't want to go off on casino. But it has to do with this movie. Yeah, so yeah, I just, yeah, yeah. I was confused. So I still am not, uh, I still don't understand why she had to die, though. Like, I still don't. Do you? Can, can you explain any further, Jake? I mean, uh, like, what do you think about No, this? I mean... I think, like like you had said, she did it to save him because, uh, maybe and maybe even she did it to set him on a path towards finding out who Quantum yeah. Inspector is. Like maybe she realized I have to die to make all this happen. Yeah. Nothing will ever be fine with me alive. You know they're always keep going after me. Blah blah blah. Um, so maybe that scene where she dies, he witnesses it. White's in the background, sets uh, the motion in place that Quantum happens, then Skyfall, then Spectre. It's like all this whole franchise may hinge on that, that whole scene. Like we will never know, obviously, um, but it just seems like she di- she she died to save Bond from uh, you know something worse happening, and because you know he. Obviously, they would have never been able to live happily ever after with her alive. Yeah, it seemed like because she was wrapped up I mean, way too much. If she did really fall in love with him too, in the process of all this, it would have made sense. Like, because she wants to save him, you know. Yeah. Um, so let me ask you guys this. So going back to Spectre. So why do you guys think Spectre fell short? Like, what in the develop in the production process and directing? What went wrong? Like, why do you guys think it didn't live up to even close to the quality of Skyfall? Uh, I will say because, um, like we say all the time with these superhero movies, um, they're trying to set up too much. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's, they try to set up this movie, this movie, this character, this character. Like, they're trying to do too much. 
Spectre is almost the opposite as where it's trying to wrap everything up. I, it included yeah. too much. Like, it's, it's awesome. It's cool to see that uh, all three villains from the previous three films are involved. Uh, it has to do with Vesper. It has to do with M. Like, all this stuff happens. His family. Like, that's cool. But it just seemed like there was way too much to process almost. Like, that scene where they get inside the hotel room, they find out what's really going on. You get the octop octopus with the legs and it has these, you know, it looks like a tree branch where yeah. it comes down, all these heads are on it and everything. That's cool and all, but it's all, it's like we were talking about earlier. The execution may have not been there as best as it could have been. Like they tried to include too much to make it make us think like, oh, these previous three movies, like it has to do with everything. No, I think you're absolutely right, man, because I like I wasn't sure. That's why I asked you guys this question, like what you guys had all the right ingredients right in front of you like what went wrong but it might have started from right from the beginning writing the script because i didn't even look at it that way so like look at something like amazing spider-man 2 they tried to set up so much of the future like to make everything connected like oscorp created every all the villains it did the exact opposite so i don't even think they planned for this to be the story no they just like how can we make it like a big twist where Ultimately, everything ties together, and you're absolutely right. That might have been their first mistake in even thinking of that story in the first place. And, you know, uh, I know this, this couldn't have happened because Vesper died in the first one and M died in Skyfall, but I think it would have been really cool to see Spectre connect to Casino Royale only and not yeah. the rest of them. But that couldn't have happened because of how personal well, and big Skyfall well, was. Well, because Quantum of Solace relies a lot on Casino yeah, Royale. Yeah, so if, if, like, if Quantum of Solace and Skyfall hadn't done with anything with Casino Royale, like I talked about with the, the Solo uh, series earlier, like it would have been cool to see just uh, Spectre go, go back, back to, to the, the original one. movie. But that obviously couldn't happen because of how uh, the progression that kind of happened like, through the movie. Kind of like The Dark Knight Rises in a way. Yeah, it has because to been with Ra's al Ghul. The Dark Knight doesn't really have anything to do with with Batman Begins, but The Dark Knight Returns has all to do with Batman Begins. So, kind of thing. What were you gonna say, Gio? Uh, two things. If they had just taken out that MI six double O, trying to take yeah, that take too. out all that all that time and dedicate it to the story. And you would have came up with a much better film. And give those side characters more screen time, too. Well, it, that, that's why they but that's, the whole that, side The part. side characters wouldn't have gotten screen time if they didn't create that. Because you would have never seen M. You would have never seen Q. You're very right. But Money Penny may have been involved in more things if they didn't. But they gave her that stuff with M and Q instead of with Bond. But that's the only reason they did create it. And it's not a terrible thing. It's just it wasn't mm -mm. executed it wasn't like it should have right, been, and we've seen that before. Like, yeah, we it reminded me so much of Mission Impossible: Rogue Nation and of well, Ghost Captain, Ghost Protocol, oh, Ghost Protocol, Ghost and Protocol. Winter Soldier. It, it reminded yeah. me of all of that, and like, it's like, come on, like, and those are all spy related movies, you know. So it they should have done something more original in that sense. Yeah, and it's it, it's really a shame because what Quantum of Solace. Um, a big reason why it failed uh, story-wise is because of the writer strike that happened during the time uh, Quantum of Solace was in production. Um, they couldn't get a script uh, together well enough. They were doing rewrites on set. Even Daniel Craig was a part of the rewrites. <laughs> that, that's how desperate they were. And Daniel they, Craig um, wrote the whole script. And, <laughs> and with Spectre, you have all this time. You have a director coming back in Sam Mendes. You know, uh, you have a lot of great things that you established in Skyfall, and it just who directed the first two? Barely. Was it the same? They were two, guy? Diff two different guys. Two different guys. Yeah, I'll, first, look, I'll look it up. First one, uh, Casino Royale was Martin Campbell, and uh, Quantum of Solace was uh, Mark Forster. The guy okay. who directed Forster, yeah, Forster, Forster yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I, it's safe to say that ultimately we we were all disappointed with this film. I think, even though it's not a bad movie. It's just, and you know, when we say disappointment, it's not like I mean, you're probably gonna be surprised when we give ratings too, because they don't seem like disappointing numbers. It's just yeah. that it's following Skyfall, 
Like, it's the only reason. We're not saying disappointment like how Fantastic Four was a disappointment this no, year. No, it's, it's it's like I said in the beginning. It, as a Daniel Craig, James exactly. Bond film, it's disappointing. Exactly. But, and, so, and that's me. And that's me. Yeah. So you've heard us ramble on about our thoughts on Spectre and apparently the whole James Bond franchise with Daniel Craig. <laughs> and I think it was necessary to talk about all those other films to talk about this movie because, like you said... That's the way they told the story where it all connected. Yeah. So it wasn't out of place for us to talk about those movies. So what we're gonna do now is give our score out of 10. I'm gonna start with Gio because Gio, you wrote the written review for our, our website, apocalypsemovies.com, yes. go check it out. Um, and I'm curious, after a few days talking about it, has your score changed? What was your original score? My original score was 7.75. Yeah, getting all technical. So. <laughs> Is your score still the same? No. It's lower. All right. Uh, real quickly, I'll just say, uh, guys, watch this Bond film, um, especially if you're a fan of Daniel Craig, because this will be the last time we see Daniel Craig as James Bond. Uh, it's an interconnected story. Um, it's better than Quantum of Solace. Uh, definitely check it out. There's a lot of action in it, um, and you might love it. So with that in mind, uh, I'm gonna give I'm gonna change my score from seven point seven five to seven point five. <laughs> Just a minor, a minor what, dip. You, you realize a, a little more flaws in it. Yeah, after hearing <laughs> after you guys and me it. talking about it again, I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm going down a little bit. So all right, Jake, the big drum roll. What, um, what are you gonna score? I mean, Spectre. it's it's hard because. I don't remember what I gave Quantum Solace, but it definitely is a better uh, movie than Quantum Solace. And like you said, if you're looking for a movie, go see. This is the movie go see right now. It's the it's, most entertaining movie out. Yeah, right it's now. it's an action packed movie that um, it delivers. I mean, if you don't go in thinking, "Oh my God, is this going to be Casino Royale? Oh my God, this, is this going to be Skyfall?" Yeah, you're going to love the film. Leave your expectations. Yeah, it's at like the just door. go in there with yeah. an open mind. Um, Look forward to the the type of character moments there are, the action scenes, all that kind of stuff, and you're you're gonna come out uh, very happy with what you see. I'm gonna go with you. I'm gonna give it a seven and a half. Um, that might change. I was debating between a seven and a seven and a half, but um, it's it's a it's a third best movie in the franchise, and that is that's like that's not a a ding towards it at all because Casino Royale is in my top ten of all time, and Skyfall is an amazing mm -hmm. movie. So to be the third best movie in this franchise is still a very good thing. Yeah. So um, I'll stick with 7.5. That might eventually change. Yeah. It's kind of unfair. This movie like was had the odds against it already. You know, it's it's kind of like how going back to the Dark Knight. How do you how is the Dark Knight Rises gonna be better than the Dark Knight? Like it's almost impossible. So what's up? I'm sorry. I, I know it's your turn, but they they kind of put themselves in the hole too by connecting the story so much to the previous films that you it can't limited help, the you can't the help think about the previous films too mm -hmm. All right, so go ahead, go ahead. yeah i mean it's really tough but um i'm gonna go a little different than you guys and give it a 7.5 no, i'm just kidding no actually that's my score 7.5 and i had it in my head before you guys even said it that i mean because an eight is too high like it's it's not an eight and a seven i think it deserves better than a seven i'm not gonna go seven Point three nine. No. Why not? <laughs> I think a seven point five is a pretty good score. So we pretty much are on the same. We're all on the same page with this movie, which we don't agree on every movie. Trust me, guys. We, we Just check it. out the Fantastic Four review. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, we didn't do an Avengers: Age of Ultron review, but if we did, we can do a re-review. There, there would be some oh, yeah. heated debates going I'm on. Down but I'm down for a re-review. Yeah. There's <laughs> a movie that we all agree on. Not great. Not horrible. Decent to good. I think the best word to describe it is fun. Yeah. I think it, I think it's a fun movie. Which is so wrong considering it's Daniel Craig as James Bond. Yes. Yes. Like, yes. I think it's, just a, it's, it's a fun. You wouldn't say Casino Royale was fun. Like like <laughs> I said, I think I think that it's unfortunately it's it's a popcorn movie. That's it's what very, I think it was made entertaining. Out to be. I think it's While it was a popcorn other one, movie. Like Skyfall and Royale. I think had it, I think so it was a movie. Death. I think this if this movie would have been released in June or July, it would have done a lot better. Yeah, I, because I, the style of movie it is. I think so too. So, but we just expect so much, more, so much more from these the movies because of the too. franchise. Yeah. 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 So you heard our scores: seven point five. 
all the way around the table. Uh, I just want to say, like, like Gio was saying earlier, you should go see this movie. Like, don't let our... We, we didn't even give it a negative review. Don't let our mediocre reviews, like, keep you from wanting to see this movie in the theaters. The best time you're going to have watching this movie is going to be in the theater. Like, yes. don't wait till Redbox. Go see it on the big screen. It's meant to be seen on the big screen. The action sequences are really good. Cinematography. The cinematography is awesome. The opening scene is incredible. There's so, a few hotties in there. Uh, yeah, there's always hotties in Bond films. Um, so yeah, go ahead and see it, especially if you have enjoyed this this franchise up till now and, and this story revolving around Daniel Craig's Bond. Definitely go see it. Um, and we're going to close it out right there. Uh, I want to thank my two partners here. Gio, where can they find you online, man? You guys can find me on Twitter at Jojo Ramos24 and on ApocalypseMovies.com every day. And Jake Berlin, where can they find you online? Uh, Twitter, Instagram at Qui-Gon Jake, Facebook Jake Berlin, and our Facebook page, Apocalypse Movies, and also at ApocalypseMovies.com. And I'm Jacob Bartley, your host of this podcast review. And you can find me on Twitter at Governor Bartley. You can find me on Facebook anywhere, Jacob Bartley. And you can find me on ApocalypseMovies.com and this YouTube channel, Apocalypse Movies. Please subscribe. We would really appreciate it. If you are subscribed and you like this review, hit that like button. And thank you all. We will see you in our next spoilers review.